Welcome to my steampunk city, the survival world I've been building for over a year and a half. Last time I built this incredible street complete with a factory for compressed amethystine. But what is amethystine? I discovered this mysterious flower beneath the foundations of the city. It flows with a mystical energy that powers the citizens steampunk machines. It also opened a portal that seems to randomly let minecrafters into my world. But now, a couple of episodes back, I built this custom terrain with this giant bridge connecting to the cathedral. And now I think it's time to start linking it in to the rest of the base. And I'm going to do that out in this area first, where we open up this giant tunnel through to the base itself and down here. And I'm going to add an entirely new section of dock going all the way around here with a very, very special build sitting right about there. So for the first stage of this, it's time to start clearing out some of this sand. And you know what that means? It's time lapse time. But this time lapse is a little different as I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all you amazing people who watch these videos and support the channel. Whether you're new or you've been around for a while, I appreciate you. That took a surprisingly long time and I did get quite a few resources from there as well. So I'm going to collect these up, get those back to the storage area and fix up my tools because they are a little bit the worse for wear. I love villagers. With my tools and armor now repaired, it's time for me to tell you about a big new project. First of all, for this, I need to head right the way through the nether and fly over to the end portal because I found something that's inspired me. As it stands, I've not done very much with the main end island at all. As you can see, we've got the copper farm over here and the wither and wither rose farm just down here under the end gateway itself but aside from that i've only beaten the ender dragon once and opened up a single end gateway so ad what's inspired you i hear you ask and that's a very good question i was surfing the interwebs as minecrafters do and i came across something very very special if i do this you'll see a massive planet that spawned behind me. And if I look forward, you can see this absolutely amazing black hole that's just here in front of me. And this is a brand new shader pack that I found. And as soon as I saw this, I knew I had to get a hold of a copy, which I managed to do. It's called Iteration T and it's version three. And I absolutely love how this makes the end look. The end has always been for me something that's been a little bit boring, a little bit dull and very, very grainy. So having something like this has made me think, what can I do with this island that is going to show off the kind of space theme that we've got here? And as many of you all know, I am partial to a futuristic build every now and again. So my plan is going to be to get hold of a whole load of gas tiers, fight the Ender Dragon the other 19 times and then start doing something with this island. I'm not quite sure exactly what yet, but I can tell you one thing, it's going to be fitting in with the theme from these shaders for sure. And I'm probably going to need to mine a lot of obsidian. But that project is going to be very much for another day. Not least of all because I've got no gas tiers whatsoever. Anyway, back to the base. And now that I'm back here, I need to start collecting the resources that I'm going to need to build a dock very similar to this one over in the other area. So back to the storage area and time to start filling some shulker boxes with copious amounts of stone. But then a strange thing happened. Ooh, what is this? Hello, is anyone here? This is crazy. Oh, I hear someone. Wait a second. I can hear. I can hear someone. One sec. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I. Yeah, I hear. Where are you? I'm just coming down the stairs. What? What is? Is that? Is that Ray? Yeah, this is Ray. How do you know? I recognize the voice. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hey, long time no see. How are you long doing? Time no see. I think, well, what is this place? Um, ye, this is this is the Amethystine portal. And um, yeah, since I discovered this place, there's some weird things that have been happening and people keep showing up in my world. <laughs> so um, welcome to my solo survival world. And uh, yeah, nice to have you here. I don't quite know how all this works yet, but um, as you're here, why don't you come up and I will give you a quick look around the place. Place looks really cool. Like I say, I, I discovered this. These are amethystine, and these are these are trouble. Um, I I I tell you to pick one, but you never know what might happen to your pocket if you did. <laughs> it's J 
just up here if you follow oh, the wow. scaffolding yeah this this was the amethyst geode that i was in and i was just digging around and then found the entrance to that other cave and i discovered the amethystine first in this this geode and i'd never seen it before i, I mean you know a lot about the game is that is that usual to find like no. have you seen that before i mean uh, no it sounds very magical it's funny you should say that because since i found it weird stuff has been happening more often than than i would care to to uh, to tell you about but here we go this is the it comes out unfortunately in the in the sewer but oh, the sewer. <laughs> um but if you come across here we've got some uh, i got a bit lonely in the world so i had to add some friends in so we've got we've got tango up oh, here got some familiar faces yeah so tango up here and if you come this way ray then you will actually you might see somebody who's even more familiar this this way um i don't know who if you know who who this fine gentleman here is what wait this, yeah I, I wouldn't i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't touch him i mean an interdimensional <gasps> rift may open um yeah Probably not the best thing. <laughs> Feel free to grab some some kit oh, from this barrel. This is my guest box. I started this um, because, like I say, people started showing up in the base. If you plant the amethystine, it turns into something like this, which is... Oh, wow. Probably a good thing you have glass around it. Yeah, well, I built the bell jar first because when I found the plant, I was a little oh, bit okay. worried what might happen. I've been powering a lot of the steampunk machines from this place and it's been it's been fantastic it saved me loads in electricity bills <laughs> so there's there's some benefits to it i guess oh yeah yeah i mean it's it's not without its benefits for sure but yeah this is my world please do make yourself at home wow I definitely uh see there's a lot of uh, like steampunk theme that's really cool yeah yeah this is this uh, this world's been going for about 18 months that i've been building in it it's getting pretty big i've tried to build farms into because i know obviously farms are your thing i've tried to build various different sizes of farms into things so obviously I've got some a very basic sugar game farm here. Well, that's well integrated. Whoa! <laughs> Did you fall down the hole? Yes, I'll I come fell down, down with the you. Pipe. Yep. If you if you come down here, this is one of my uh, more recent uh, things. I think you might actually appreciate this. This is my chicken powered skulk farm. Oh wow! So I I will just switch on. So if we've just got a a simple etho hopper clock. These chickens drop their eggs through, which obviously gets shot out. And then once they grow up, they hit the lava. And I just figured it was a, a more interesting way to get hold of Skulk than quite a few of the, the regular ones. That is cool. So you have it like kind of getting all stored up so you can use it whenever you want. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the the downside is that it's not, I have to be careful that I make sure I turn it off. I, you'll see all these immovable blocks that I've oh. over time been adding because every time I <laughs> nice. forget, every time I forget, then things start to break once this fills up. And so over time, I've just managed to, I think I've just about managed to completely stop it from breaking until it gets to this <laughs> point. So, but it's yeah. trying to spread and take over your world. Well, yeah, that's the problem with Skulk. It is um, <laughs> not, not quite as dangerous as Amethystine, but still pretty, pretty dangerous. I really like how you got super like packed, just packed of all sorts of things. Yes. Either like wiring or steampunk or farms. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've tried to kind of stick with the steampunk feeling right the way through this place and i see steampunk is pretty crowded you get a lot of people mm -hmm. who have like the bases who are that are pretty well spread out um so this mm -hmm. is the basement of my storage system there's a building on top that's also got like three floors worth of of auto storers i haven't gone into the multi-item store yet i'm still quite a a basic minecrafter and just the regular old um impulse driven uh storage systems but it's pretty much got i think it's got 120 130 bays something like that so it gives me a decent well, that's amount pretty of stuff. good yeah well wow, it looks like you got a pretty uh, sophisticated base going on <laughs> yeah yeah i mean like i say this this is what happens when you you are stuck in the same place to be honest the reason i added the some of these folk is because i was a little bit lonely uh i'm not gonna lie ray um <laughs> i was in this world for over a year before i had any, anybody come and visit me um and, and i got a bit, bit alone lonely so um it's nice to have company i have to say i was just in the process of collecting up some uh, some magma blocks because i've got a uh, a frog light farm in the nether ah oh, gotcha mm -hmm. but i don't know what to do with them all to be honest i've already got a gold farm i've already got a frog light farm 
Um, there's a whole bunch of farms that I've got in the nether, of course, but not quite sure what I can do with the, the rest of the magma blocks. Oh, you ever try like a gas farm? Those use quite a bit. Oh, you did. You may have just said the magic word because I want to do an end transformation. And for that, I want to beat the Ender Dragon the other times. But at the moment, I think I have the sum total of about one gas tier. So <laughs> actually, that might be something that's a really good idea. And the problem is that I have no idea how to build one. Oh, you know what? I happen to have a nice gas farm. Uses flying machines, actually, to collect Ooh. up the gas and kill them for all their tears. Wow. That, uh... So, well, whilst you're here, um, I don't suppose I could borrow some of your technical knowledge, could I? I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm leaving anytime soon. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm yeah, that's that's definitely the thing. got time to help. It seems to be a bit of a one-way portal. Um, <laughs> I, I heard the impulse turned up from some of my viewers, uh, but I don't know where he's gone. So he may be the only person who's uh, uh, who's managed to actually escape this place. But whilst you're here as a captive audience, I wouldn't say no to some help. Sounds good. Well, so what materials do you have? I know you got a lot of magma. It's going to mm -hmm. take a little bit of redstone, maybe some slabs. Yes. You got that sort of stuff? Absolutely. Oh, what awesome. I think we should do is if we do a little bit of collecting from the storage system, we can see what we've got and then head over to the nether. So, Ray, you've, you've brought me over to a soul sand valley biome and we've got all of the resources ready. Why on earth are we here? Yeah, so we're above the bedrock, so we don't have to worry about other gas spawning in the area. They'll be all stuck inside of our farm. Of course, soul sand is one of those lovely biomes that produces tons of gas. Can be quite annoying when you're under the bedrock, but up here, perfect for a farm. So we'll lay out some magma because magma is one of the few blocks that gas can spawn on, but most other things won't spawn on, like the nasty skeletons. Excellent. We can get tons and tons of gas. I've got a couple of boxes of magma here because we picked this up from the storage system. Let's get placing. So we've managed to get the roof on and we've got the base layer. So what is next, Ray? Okay, so now we need to get these gas killed. So we're gonna place down a platform that's gonna have some wither roses on top of this soul sand. Yep. And we don't have to paste, uh, we don't have to put these in too close to each other every four blocks. And that should be enough to kill them. Awesome, yes. Getting them here is good, killing them is even better. Yes. We need to cool. come in with a machine to collect all the gas from the tire platform and bring them over to our new killing chamber that we built up. Excellent. So we're going to need some flying machines now. We should have all the stuff we need, some sticky pistons, oh, awesome. some pistons in here. Uh, the way it actually turns around is if you watch it, this piston comes down just before it passes it and stops it from going further. And then mm. it stalls for a second and then the next piston makes it take off again. So we keep it open so we can move gas in here. Oh, yes. There's the other way you can actually run this is just by placing a platform and manually coming down and using looting on them. <laughs> that would be the low tech solution. Now you tell me, right? Like, <laughs> I only <laughs> I only need seven gas tiers. What what what, what are we doing? <laughs> like overkill in terms of farms. Luckily, that's not true. I need enough gas tiers to fight another nineteen dragons. So that's four gas tiers per end crystal oh, okay. and four end crystals per fight. So 16, 16 times 19. So I'm going to need quite a few gas tiers. So it's definitely, definitely going to pay dividends. So now we can put it on an off switch. I built a little uh, redstone piece, a little kind of connector piece up there. Yes. And it has some redstone on it. So this will be your on and off switch. Excellent. Oh, we got gassed. Oh. Oh, oh perfect. Huh. Got a gassed head as well. Okay, so the fly machine stopped. So this is... Looking good. And then it should start up when I flick this. Yep. Uh, so now they're synchronized. Yes. And synchronized is good because that way the gas can't slip in between the center. Perfect. What's going on here, Ray? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So we threw down some rails. We got some hopper mine carts on top of it. They're moving back and forth, picking up yep. loot. Uh, then we're running them over top of some hoppers. Uh, we went to, but we decided to take it a bit further by putting in a little smart system. So depending on if they're full or not, they'll stop. Right. If I throw down some items, let's see. They know that there's some items in them and they'll stop it to unload. 
Fantastic. And then when all the items are gone from the hopper, it's going to take off once again and continue picking up more loot. Brilliant. You can see all the loot inside. So, Ray, we're just chilling up here because we've now finished the ghast farm. I'm just going to fly down using Freecam and check out what's going on beneath. And we currently have lots and lots of ghasts here. They are all dying happily. And that looks like it's working perfectly. Thank you very, very much for that. Thanks for having me on. And if you guys ever want to look at other types of Minecraft farms, I've currently designed an automatic farm for almost every single item in the game Minecraft. And I try to make my farms simple, cheap, while being very efficient. Yeah, absolutely. And there's already a couple of farms from Ray in my world. Definitely check it out. I will pop all of his links in the description. 100% if you need a farm, this man has one without a doubt. Yeah, it was a lot of fun building this up in survival with you. Yeah, it, it had its challenges. I'm not going to lie. The, the gas <laughs> spawning did almost take us out a couple of times. But now we just have one problem, Ray, and that is I don't know how you're going to leave this world. Hmm. I wonder if I go back to like the portal. Maybe if I sit there, maybe I'll get like reabsorbed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did have some other ideas. Oh. <gasps> anyway i've got to go and pick up the stuff now i had an absolute blast catching up with ray we had so much fun and this farm is absolutely brilliant as you can see i've boxed it all in so when i'm coming down from the afk platform there's no way any of the ghasts that are left can see me. And I have been AFKing a little bit. And probably in the course of about an hour, this is all of the resources that I managed to get. So plenty of gunpowder, uh, but most importantly, loads and loads of ghast tears. So I'm going to pick these up and take these back to the storage area. Where I'm going to collect up all of the resources that I'm going to need for the first part of the dock. After a little collecting, I have everything I need. So now for another time lapse. Now that section of the dock is complete, it's time for some more experimenting. And after discovering how to create compressed amethystine last episode, it's had an immediate impact with both Impulse and Ray from Ray's Works turning up at my base unannounced. Make sure you check out both their channels in the description. And whilst you're there, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. So I wanted to see if I could combine the compressed amethystine with some other items and see if that would give me a more refined version. I started by trying to strengthen it with some iron but that had some unexpected results well that didn't work out so well so i figured i'd try adding tnt for some power and that went as you'd expect yeah with that one i should have known really eventually i tried adding some of my newly acquired gas tears this time however i was being a lot more cautious and success I'd managed to create a brand new block, Refined Amethystine. And not only is this block absolutely gorgeous to look at, but it seems to emit light and a strange kind of energy as well. So I want to get myself more of this stuff, which means that I think the next building that I build is going to have to be a refinery so that I can make this on industrial scales and see what I can do with it in the future. But now I think I need to get cleaned up and pull together the resources for the build. And here we have the latest Shulker Monster, absolutely chocked full of all of the different things that I'm going to need for this build, including, again, more trapdoors, very, very painful. But the good news on trapdoors is that Mojang, in their infinite wisdom, are going to reduce the price, so everybody wins in the future. But now, with all these resources ready, it's time for the final time lapse of the episode. And the refinery is now complete, but we can't have a refinery without anything to refine. So off the back of building the compressed amethystine factory last time, I've built these fantastic little barges to take some of this across to the refinery that's over there. So we've got one that's docked up here, one that's currently going through this channel, 
and two extra special diagonal ones over by the refinery itself. And I've now decorated the area as well. And believe me when I say that this took a long, long time. But it is completely worth it. First of all, we've got this awesome crane that rotates on these grindstones so that we can unload the barges. And we've also got a truck bringing some supplies away from the refinery once they're complete. Go around this corner, we have some storage of the compressed amethystine underground ready to be used and that gets pulled up by this conveyor belt of buckets which then travels above the roof into these furnaces and I absolutely love all the little design features here first of all we've got the machine that pumps in the gas tiers here we've got various different machines we've got these huge furnaces and I love the different colors that go on in these these walkways as well go right the way through this build and through into the silo and then inside this again we've got some more machines and this is where the amethyst comes into the process as well with a big tank down at the bottom and if we go down here again we've got another machine here some steampunk machinery to control the whole thing i absolutely love all the little details in this build it just brings the whole thing to life and is teeming with life with all of these straw statues and if you want to explore this world, it will be available after this episode to my patrons. So if that's something you're interested in, check out the link in the description. Building this whole thing on an angle was tricky, but I think it was eventually worth it. And I did do a couple of different things that I've not done before in my steampunk area so much, like this gradient on a building here and also adding the smokestack plumes with glasswork rather than actually just using the campfires themselves. But I'm super pleased with the overall result and I hope you like it too. If you did, hit that like button, let me know in the comments and I will see you all next time on AD Craft.